Fishing Freaks, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is Silver Bullet is sitting in the driveway. We have a boat ramp that is open and we're gonna take the boat out today. Mm, it's been a while since I've taken it out since the first run. The bad news is I broke a very important part on the boat and I don't want you to make the same mistake. So stay tuned. Before I show you the bad news, more good news. Here at the treehouse, I've been waiting years to get some owls in the yard because I have rats and mice that get into things around here, got chickens, they get all up in there. And we have brand new owls, a set of, I think four baby owls and their mom and they're sitting up in this tree. It's the cutest thing ever. All righty y'all, we are at the ramp now and I gotta show you something that is important to know because I know a lot of you guys are probably have used boats maybe you're thinking about buying a boat this this is an important thing to check on and it's something that concerned me and I don't know if you remember in my when I was reviewing my boat but there's really one thing everything was great with the boat there's just this one thing got a little something I don't like there has to be a lot of pressure on this strap so what I thought might be a problem ended up being a problem fast so basically when I got the boat back I realized that all the bouncing around on the road, all the pressure, it snapped it. I recognized it when I when I was picking the boat up and I was like, hey, that doesn't really seem right, but maybe I could just tighten it down. And this is what you don't want to have, all right? Don't make this mistake. This right here is your winch stand on your boat. And of course you have your winch and then you have your, your bow eye there, which you clip your, your hook on. So this is, this is all the way loose now. And it should sit just like that. You want the weight to sit on this rubber piece right here. Uh, a few days ago, this was floating above this winch stand, leaving a bunch of pressure having to pull down on this right here and this snapped. So you don't wanna have it too low. You definitely don't want it low. You shouldn't have that much pressure on your on your bow eye and that is bad on your trailer of the the rest of your trailer as well it's putting unneeded stress on your other bunks and i gotta give it to vexus on their customer service their trailer guy there is incredible he told me the exact distance that where, where that winch stand needs to be for this particular model 14 and a half inches is where I needed to be and he was exactly right so 14 and a half inches from the base of the trailer right here up to where this bolt is that goes through and he also gave me another tip that I'll give you guys to perfectly set your boat where it should be to have everything balanced you want to push this up a little bit I took a um, a jack and I pushed my boat up a little bit with a piece of wood set it up a, an inch and then I pushed it back so the weight was just boom set right under it and it fit perfectly now here's another number that I and this might be a universal across all boats I'm not sure but this is what the experts at Vexus told me you want your boat to be sitting where the drain plug is basically right here at the bottom of your boat about an inch, an inch is about perfect, into the, the bunk, no more than three inches. So most boats, they do come with an adjustable winch stand. So that means you can move it forward and back. You can also move it up and down. And that's where you have to find that balance. So I wanna give everybody that tip. I went back and I even checked the crispy collector now uh, because things were a little off with that too. It just makes loading and unloading a lot easier and especially going down the road. I mean, let's face it, I travel all over the place with this thing. You guys probably do too. If you have boats, you want to admit, you want to be confident when you go on a big long trip and for years to come that everything is in balance and it's going to get there, it's going to work and you're going to get back home. So with the bow of the boat, that's something I should have I should have done that from day 1 and not put any additional strain on it but i was just so excited i was like man i just want i just want to go out to the lake and i did not i did not do what i was supposed to do and and get that weight distributed properly so i just don't want you guys to make these same mistakes 
And if you're gonna buy a boat, don't make those mistakes because it just keeps you off the water and it interrupts the dang. This has been the first sub 20 mile an hour wind day. I've only taken the boat out once basically, but I just haven't had an opportunity to really even get it on full throttle and grr, put the mark to work and, and I just go give it a dangle. Lake's flooded, fishing's probably not gonna be great, but I gotta go, let's go. Well, bam. Let her eat right there. Verdict is 61 and a half miles an hour. It's pretty deck up good for an aluminum boat with a 200, man. You know, that's with gear. That's with gear. I'm not a speed guy anyways. Not too worried about it. And I love that this boat just cruises 4,000 RPMs at, you know, like 40 to 45. That's nice. It's good. It's good to hear the V8 purr, baby. Oh, just got to give it that little bark fart every once in a while. Oh. All right, boys, I don't have live scope. We don't have all the tricks of the trade, but going back to old school knowledge here, May, we're moving offshore. There's humps out in this lake. And just looking at my basic map over here, found a hump. Looks like there's some fish that are cruising through the hump suspiciously like white bass this is another thing i need to figure out i need to figure out my tackle organization i haven't quite figured out what i want to do if i want to put all my rods in the middle do baits over there right now most of my rods are in the left rod box and i've got most of my hard tackle over here on this side which is really clean i like this setup but i'm gonna have to put the black box for the garmin up here so that's going to cut out some room and you really can't get the front box out anyway in this uh in this organization so i'll probably put a divider and then put the black box up there and that way i can get my my baits out cleanly i'm looking for spoons right now don't ever leave home without a spoon and it is time y'all it's time for the slurping spoon to make an appearance once again Summertime dangle. Show me the money. Show me the money. Fish on. There we go. There's an eater. Show me the eaters. Yes, sir. I want to catch the eaters. Just pre-gaming, just pre-gaming a little bit. Oh, look at that. Troll motor struggling right here. Thank you, sir. I think I'll have another one of those. Might get a little crazy and get a, uh, a hybrid. They have hybrids in this lake too. Oh, there's one. He's on before it hit the bottom. Oh, we come off. Sly little devil. Okay. Okay. Man, sometimes with that spoon, I get it. You don't even know. There he is. Perfect eaters. These are perfect ones for my son to catch. This is the Silver Bullet's first white bass encounter. Let's make it a good one. It's like they're out here. They're out here in like 26 to 28. Oh man, they're a big old school under the boat right now. Look at this. Look at this old school, man. 2D. Seeing the squiggly lines on the 2D. That's fun. Looks like little ones, but we're on, baby. Oh, that feels better. That feels like a large mouth coming up to jump. That feels big. What do we got here? Oh my gosh. Might be a hybrid. This might be 
one of the hybrids we spoke of. Or is it just a runner? It's just a good, healthy white bass. Big, and Actually, that is a hybrid. So you see these broken up lines right here? That's a small hybrid. You gotta be careful when you're catching these out here. Look at that post spawn. You gotta be careful when you're catching those in a lake that has white bass because they can be confusing. And, and to keep those, they have to be much longer than 10 inches. So you wanna double check before you throw them in the box. Oh, get bumped, get bumped right under the trolling motor. Oh my gosh, look at that. Just get wha-bammed. Is that another hybrid? God, these suckers are strong. They're beat up though. They're beat up, that might be another hybrid. He's got that size. Can't really tell with him, he could be though. He could be, oh, you pooped on my silver bullet, man. That gummit, first big poop splatter on the bullet. We'll let it ride for good luck. Oh man, guys, I've missed this right here. The ability to just sit with a spot lock, throw out my line on, on an offshore spot. Oh my gosh, look at the rod bend. I'm still bent. Oh, this thing's big. Oh, it's, it's, it's big. My gosh, did you see the head shakes on that? I don't even know what this is, guys. Crazy head shakes. Doesn't feel like big head shakes, like big side to side, but oh my gosh, we got a kitty! We got a kitty on board! Should we, should we boat flip our first kitty and get it on the carpet? God, I love eating these guys. This is a blue cat. I don't even know if I can. I don't even know, oh, I lost him. That's about a four and a half, five pound blue cat right there. Nice one. I'm just telling you what, take you a spoon, chicken spoon like this, you'll catch largemouth, you'll catch white bass, of course, stripers. You will catch catfish, especially the blues. The blues hang around the striped things. They wait for the leftover scraps, the dead and injured shad, and they just suck them up. That right there is just a perfect little imitator. And since you're bouncing it on the bottom, if you if you kind of get lazy like I did a little bit there, and I was you know in between my my pops, that's usually when they grab it. It's pretty close to the bottom. So uh, you guys want to get some of these? This is a slurping spoon. This is a half ounce. I would definitely recommend getting the half ounce for summertime. And uh, you can use my promo code LFG at GuggenSquad.com. Save 10% at checkout. But these are great spoons. Comes with a swivel up front and they're pretty, you know, they're pretty and all that. But it's basically just a slab of lead. It looks pretty. Feather treble on it. It's about all there is to a spoon, but my gosh, it just catches things. I got my first catfish, my first hybrid, first white bass. I'm hooked up again. The silver bullet's back at it again. She's back online. Exactly what I want to get my, my son on right here. Just straight dangle under the boat. You know, let him catch the fish. Tell him, drop it down. That's how I caught my first fish ever. Another thing you want to watch for when you're spooning is your line to flinch. So you want, you want to let the spoon fall on slack line. So it's just going straight down, pump it back up. That'll give it that good action. And when you see that line flinch you know that's a strike just lift up and you got them oh, these are just these are just great eater size perfect ones right here these are your fishing license tax dollars at work right here these hybrid stockings and white bass you paid for them you might as well eat them that's my philosophy not eating them today, but I, I, I assure you it's, it's coming. It's coming soon. Goodness, man. Look at that bad boy right there. No? Post spawn, they go up in uh, current spawn. And they come back out. There's another poop on the, right on the console. We can't have the console poop. That's not good. Whoo, silver bullet. I'd say she's fully broken in. We got, we got a bass. First time out, we got catfish now. We got white bass. We got hybrids. 
Mm, you know what? We're not broken in. We don't have crop. Oh my gosh. Wow, walloped. Felt like a big hit. Something large tried to pop it there. We don't have crop yet. That's next, it's coming. Oh yeah, oh my gosh, that feels large. That's either another cat. Oh gosh, it come off. No, oh, my gosh, no scope, popping them, big and big and big and. Oh my gosh, that's a kitty cat. I can feel them twisting down there. Oh, that's large. Oh, against my better judgment, I'm gonna let this fish go and in good luck hopes with my son coming out here, but that is a tasty blue cat, guys, man. Just had it down, he had it down his, his little catty crushers. Onk, 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 onk. Get down there and get those leftovers, bud. They're not schooling up top, but they are schooling down below. Love getting, love getting this many tugs in a short amount of time. Oh, it's a little cat. It's a Chanel. A little Chanel got down there. You do get those every once in a while. That's about the size it'll take you to the cleaners with its spikes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, that's a catfish. Gotta be. Big surge. Yeah, Sally, you, <laughs> you guys wanna catch some catfish on spoons or what? Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, catfish goo on the silver bullet. Oh, these are great eaters. Some of you might think I'm crazy, but for those of you that have not tried a properly prepared blue catfish, y'all are missing out. Ah. Whew, I love them all. I know, I, I came out here to literally test the boat and make sure everything was good with it, putting it back on the trailer. So after I fixed um, the uh, winch stand where it's supposed to be, I didn't get the boat all the way back up there because it wasn't in the water. So I was going to unload, put it back on. But how can I not fish if the boat's in the water? Can't do that. Slingshot. Engage. Bye, bye. Now we are going to see how that is going to line up. Hopefully it's going to be smooth. Still trying to figure out where exactly I need to put my trailer in the water too, make it perfect. I think this ought to be pretty good. Wow, that feels good. Well, this could be an ongoing process. I'm learning, but I think I could have left my trailer shallower on the on the bunks when I was backing in because when I when I pulled up or when I uh, stood on the front I put weight on the front that weight made it slide back a little bit but the weight is still sitting on on that uh, the rubber deal just fine so I'm not worried about it if I let this pressure off it's it's gonna stay there but it's also it's pretty flat up front which makes it just a little different than other boats I've had in the past. I want to get her dialed. Everything's looking good in the back. It's our distance. We're a little bit farther forward. We're a little bit farther forward here. Probably a, a half inch farther up than what we were before. She rocked and rolled today catching them fish. Good pre-fishing session for coming back out here with the kids. We'll get them on the white bass. So get, get my son Ben initiated, it's gonna be awesome. So you guys stay tuned. And if I just help one person in this video not to have their boat roll off or something break, then I'll feel good about myself. So you guys hang tight, stay tuned for more outdoor action here. And I will see you on the next one.